Hello everyone. Today uh, I am going to discuss about uh, uh, distributed uh, Bragg reflector. Distributed Bragg reflector that is an uh, another important integrated optical components. And uh, I will discuss that this uh, DBR structure uh, using coupled mode theory, which is as I said that coupled mode theory is somehow somehow it is a um, good. Uh, theoretical disc analysis, uh, you can understand most of the integrated optical component and we have already developed uh, coupled mode uh, theory for co-directional coupling and contra-directional coupling. So, uh, as we already mentioned earlier that distributed Bragg reflector that is actually uh, works based on the uh, mode coupling in the contra-direction when they are propagating in contra direction that means one will be in the positive direction another mode will be in the reverse direction negative direction. So, uh, considering that uh, I will just highlight some kind of recap what we have learned so far based on contra directional coupled mode equations and then I will discuss how to solve this coupled mode equation particularly for distributed uh, Bragg reflector and then I will discuss about uh, a design of an integrated optical. DBR filter, passive uh, band pass filter or band rejection filter, uh, you can use uh, DBR structure. So, uh, just go back uh, to our uh, uh, distributed uh, grating structure. We discussed earlier that if you have a waveguide that is propagating along z direction mode is propagating along z direction, it can be single moded, it can be multi moded and uh, waveguide you can consider this, this is the core whatever it is shown here in x y direction, x y plane this core is there and surrounding cladding will be there and as long as the dielectric constant distribution for the waveguide epsilon a x y is maintained then you can see all the guided modes uh, they are orthogonal and uh, they will be traveling independently, they will not interact each other. However, if you have a certain kind of periodic perturbation here for example, given uh, uh, from z equal to z 0 to z equal to z 0 plus L uh, with a perturbation. So, epsilon a x y is added with another perturbation term that is delta epsilon x y z. So, in that case what we have taken that this perturbation is periodic uh, with a periodicity of lambda capital lambda this is the uh, periodicity ok. So, if you just start from here to here this is one period ok then it is repeating again another one and then it is repeating another one. So, it is a periodic structure that means this white region we can consider that the height of the waveguide is reduced you can consider the width of the waveguide also uh, can be reduced or increased periodically that can be also considered a periodic perturbation. And that periodic perturbation we can actually uh, define uh, as like this. You have some kind of x y uh, profile will be there that is actually called transverse perturbation E p t x y and then longitudinal perturbation that is actually z we can decompose into two functions. And then E p t x y we can define what type of perturbation it is in the cross section waveguide cross section how it is perturbation and longitudinal direction since it is periodic we can decompose into Fourier harmonics. So, if you see the spatial periodicity is lambda in Fourier harmonics it will be 2 pi over lambda times integer and m can be plus minus and so on and this b m is called Fourier coefficient. So, in that case I can define that this total perturbation we can together this E p t x y plus Fourier coefficient if I just consider that can be the that can be considered as a perturbation of m th Fourier harmonics along z direction. So, we can write E p t x y as a delta n square x y that is the refractive index you know dielectric constant if you know just uh, square of the refractive index is equal to uh, dielectric constant. So, if the refractive index perturbation is delta n if you just square it then you get the dielectric constant if you multiply epsilon 0 that is the permittivity or the free space in the free space and b m it is written this we have discussed earlier and m can be 0 plus minus 
1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on. 0 means it is the DC component of the Fourier transform. transform. Okay. Now, so if you just think about that, let us define this longitudinal part, longitudinal part we define as a SZ defined function SZ. This one you are defining as a SZ or you can write this as a EPL Z longitudinal direction. So, that is we can write something like this BM e to the power the same thing we are just repeating here and perturbation duty is P lambda. So, this periodicity you can consider this perturbation where the height is changed that uh, fraction of the entire period that is called duty. So, I can consider P lambda is the duty where P is the 0 less than uh, greater than 0 and less than 1. So, that means it is something this duty is less than lambda P can be up to uh, close to 1 also. So, that is the duty and in that case we can find out this Fourier coefficient directly from this formula. So, we integrate 0 to P lambda e to the power j m 2 pi by lambda z dz 1 over lambda and then we can find out B m and also we have seen that B m equal to B minus m star that is actually property of this transfer function uh, for the Fourier transform and then you just integrate this one we get the Fourier coefficient B m in terms of duty cycle. You remember that if duty cycle is just p equal to 0 0.5 then it will be half and then half and then you can find out what is the value p, p if you are putting half. For example, here it is given if you are putting p equal to half then b 0 that m equal to 0 will be just half that means DC component uh, of the Fourier transform is just half and then other than DC component if it is um, other value 0 not 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on B m will be something you can just directly put here that P equal to half then B m value will be just J over m pi. So, that means B 1 will be J by pi and B minus 1 would be also j by pi. B minus 1 will be j by minus this will be minus right because m equal to minus but b minus 1 star if you put then it will be j by pi again. So, that is how we get b 1 equal to b minus 1 star ok. So, that is how we b 1 equal to j over pi we have written. And <coughs> since uh, you have one component coming like this if you are just introducing this one in your coupled mode equation then longitudinal uh, phase matching uh, condition will appear like delta beta equal to beta k minus beta n minus m 2 over 2 pi over lambda and then uh, kappa the so called coupling coefficient c coupling between kth mode and nth mode because of the mth Fourier harmonics we have expressed earlier that omega epsilon 0 by 4 b m that is the Fourier harmonics and then you can integrate e k star e n through delta n square that is actually so called coupling coefficient. So, you remember that this is actually dielectric perturbation and dielectric perturbation you have longitudinal term is there that longitudinal term actually uh, uh, actually clapped with the longitudinal phase because that is also the beta k z beta n z will be there in the um, all the coupled equations. So, there we have clapped this one and that is why only the transverse direction whatever perturbation is there delta n square x y and field distribution for kth mode field distribution for the nth mode you integrate over uh, wherever these three values are non-zero you get the value and B m you can consider which Fourier harmonics is being considered for involved in coupling between two modes that is how we can calculate we discussed this in details earlier already. So, here we can just repeat here just to take up uh, take take it forward we know that for co-directional coupling we consider evolution of the mode 1 then we can write this equation and this equation for the other one and in that case co-directional coupling we consider beta 1 and beta 2 greater than 0 because beta 1 if is a positive direction mode 2 also the will be traveling also positive direction plus if both are traveling in the negative direction then also plus. So, we consider that if beta 1 for co-directional coupling this is the uh, condition need to be fulfilled. If this is the condition fulfilled, you have coupled equations are like this, these two equations. And if beta 1 and beta 2 greater than equal to, so this should be less than equal to 0. That means, contra direction, this is a type of error, this is less than 
equal to g less than g, 0 that means one of them will be positive direction another will be negative direction ok. So, in that case so we get uh, because this combination is in picture so coupled equation one will be minus sign another will be plus sign that is the difference actually we said that for co-directional coupling the both is a minus sign and contradictional coupling both are uh, opposite sign because you have beta k by beta k this term is there. So, depending on the positive and negative direction the coupled equations will be looking like that. So, this is uh, this is required and we are talking about distributed Bragg reflector that is our discussion point w then in that case we will be coupling light from a mode propagating in the forward direction to a mode propagating in the backward direction. So, mode will be coupled from energy will be coupled from forward propagating mode to backward propagating mode. So, that thing if at all some phase matching condition is uh, fulfilled then we, we can see some kind of uh, energy transfer and that energy transfer can be understood can be explained uh, analytically using these two coupled equation. If we can solve this two coupled uh, equation then we will be understanding how the mode 1 is evolved uh, longitudinal direction and how mode 2 is evolved in longitudinal direction meaning along the z direction. So, now we will be discussing about uh, solving coupled mode equations. So, we said uh, that our this is something uh, we are considering our getting structure top view we are showing and instead of height perturbation here for understanding purpose we consider understanding and technology uh, implementation purpose normally instead of height modulation uh, particularly for silicon photonics uh, people used to go for width modulation waveguide width modulation. So, here if you see width waveguide width is periodically modulated from z equal to 0 to z equal to L ok. So, in that case we are talking about coupling between forward propagating mode and backward propagating mode forward propagating mode the associated electric field can be space dependent x y z dependent and time dependent we mention here f that means forward propagating mode and backward propagating mode similarly we just write e b x y z t b for b stand for backward f stand for forward direction and this is z direction obviously x direction and vertical direction perpendicular to the screen is y direction. So, top view we are showing. So, before that before z if z uh, less than 0 the waveguide is uniform. So, all the orthogonal modes will be there if it is a multi mode waveguide mode suppose fundamental mode is guiding field distribution will be like this and it will be propagating here and once it is entering into the grating structure there you have a perturbation periodic perturbation. So, the uh, there is a chance that mode will be coupled if it is a single mode fund fundamental forward mode and fundamental backward propagating mode they will be coupled ok. So, we can define two modes in the forward direction E f x y z we can write because of coupling there will be a z dependent amplitude variation will be there we introduce a 1 z and uh, field distribution is e 1 x y and since it is forward propagating wave. So, phase will be e to the power j omega t minus beta 1 z this is positive z direction propagating and if I consider another mode having field distribution of e 2 x y and propagation constant of beta 2 that is propagating in the reverse direction we can define backward propagating wave is uh, e b x y z like that. In this case we have just consider general situation. So, that it need not be that uh, forward propagating fundamental mode needs to be coupled to the for backward propagating fundamental mode. It can be multi mode waveguide any forward propagating mode that is characterized by beta 1 and E 1 will be coupled to the backward propagating mode having uh, propagation constant beta 2 and field distribution E 2. And we know that this uh, longitudinal phase uh, constant difference delta beta phase difference so what was the delta beta value we consider actually beta 1 minus beta 2 by 2 pi over lambda and this is the coupled equation we discussed. And we have to solve this coupled equation considering these boundary values. What is that boundary values? A 1 z equal to 0 a 1 means this one forward direction at z equal to 0 we have some certain value this can be 1 also we can consider normalized or any value such that you can consider a 1 0 
square equal to one watt also. That means you can consider one watt I am launching. Then how much fractions will be coupled to the other modes? We need to find out. You can consider one. Here we have considered the amplitude A10. And another boundary value we must know that if something at all propagating in the backward direction, you are launching from this side. So, there will be nothing coming from the left side. So, only thing is that because of the perturbation entire region, you can see that light will be can be propagating in the forward direction that can be coupled to the reverse direction. So, reverse direction if it is coupled and it is constructively building up, then you can see that this direction reverse direction backward propagating mode, you can see some kind of energy, it can be excited because of the perturbation. But beyond z equal to L, you do not have any perturbation, so you will not see any backward propagating mode here because you are launching from this side. So, backward propagating mode beyond z equal to L is 0. So, that is why if I have a forward propagating mode is having amplitude this one and backward propagating mode is this one A to z, then A to z equal to L must be equal to 0. So, these two boundary values we must be knowing if I want to solve how much power is be exchanged between these two modes. This boundary condition is known. We have to find out that one. Based on that, we have to solve these two differential equations. So, how we solve that? First, what we do? We just take this one. I want to solve for example, A1 first, okay, A1z. So, here A to Z is there. This A to Z I have to replace from here so that I know d a 2 equal to d a 1 something blah 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 is there. So, what I do? I do uh, this equation, I do differentiation this equation with respect to z once more. So, then we can get this one d 2 a 1 by d z 2 and then minus j kappa and d a 2 by d z and I keep as it is this one and then next one I, I have to differentiate this one. So, I will be getting j delta beta, j delta beta will be multiplied by minus j. So, it will be plus 1 plus kappa delta beta a 2 delta beta. So, you just make a differentiation this equation with respect to z we will get this one. Now, you know this value I can bring from here and this value a 2 I can bring from here. a 2 I can represent in terms of differentiation of a 1 and d a 2 by d z I can take here, I can substitute here, then ultimately this one will be a complete equation for a 1 that will be completely decoupled, that equation will be completely decoupled from a 2, but inherently mode two modes are coupled that, that much we know, but mathematically we can get independent equation for a 1 now. Okay? So, that equation will be looking like this, I just substitute this one d a 2 this one d a 2 by d z equal to this one I substitute here minus j k and then kappa delta beta a 2 a 2 I take from here I substitute here then I get this one and move on to that one little bit simplify then you get this nice equation. So, this equation involves only a 1 second order simple differential equation, but it is a complex differential equation. The solutions a, a 1 must be complex because you j involve here delta beta is given here two modes here. So, we need to solve this one the solving this equation and we know that solving differential equation you will be getting constants and that constant values can be uh, derived by these boundary values. Okay? So, we know that how we have solved uh, similar type of differential equation uh, for co-directional coupling, but here only uh, contra-directional coupling this minus kappa square it will be kappa square there. So, that is the only difference we consider this one after solving this one using this condition I get a 1 z same fashion I have just uh, little bit I did here uh, I, few step I skipped because it is a procedure is same same it is a second order differential equation you can just simple method you can use and use the boundary conditions boundary values then you get a 1 z will be like this and a 2 z will be like that just few steps you can try. Uh, similar like whatever we have solved for co-directional coupling case. And in this case, S we have represented as a kappa square delta beta by 2. You remember that in um, co-directional coupling S was defined by kappa square plus delta beta by 2. 
So, contra directional case 1 minus sign plus sign minus sign is there that is why this minus sign is translated here and we get a solutions a 1 z a 2 z. So, that means I now know how this a 1 z a 2 z will be evolved as a function of z as far as if I know delta beta value and if I know the kappa value because delta beta and kappa value if you know then we will be knowing s once we know s then I will be able to find out how z dependent amplitude will be varying for forward propagating wave and how z dependent uh, value will be varying for a backward propagating wave ok. So, we have now solutions. So, this solution from this solution if you see both a 1 z and a 2 z in terms of a 1 0 because a 1 0 is the value we know a 2 z equal to uh, L that is actually 0. So, in, once we know a 1 0 value how much amplitude I am launching in the forward direction I know what is the z dependent variations will be there for forward propagating wave and this is also a 1 0 as a function of a 2 z as a function of a 1 0 a 1 more means a 2 z will be just proportionally it will be there. So, I can say that reflection coefficient suppose this length is L that means I can say what is happening up to L this one and what is the value at z equal to 0 for example, z equal to 0 if I just put z equal to 0 I will be getting a to z equal to 0. That means I have here I have launched here a 1 0 this direction and then this direction I will be getting a to 0. That means if I put z equal to 0 I will be getting whatever field amplitude is reflected in the backward direction at z equal to 0. So, if I just put a to z equal to 0 and a 1 0 take a ratio once I put z equal to 0 then numerator will be S L and this will be S L this will be S L. So, S L is written a 2 0 by a 1 0 so, what it means it means a 2 0 what is reflected from the system entire system a 2 at 0 whatever value and a 1 0 what is I have launched that means that can be considered as a reflection coefficient. So, I can find out for the entire structure what would be the reflection coefficients. In this expression again you see unknown delta beta and s. So, once you know delta beta, once you know kappa then I can find s, once you know s then I can find what is the reflection coefficient ok. So, this is how we can solve how the amplitude will be varying if we know all this any electric field. Uh, propagating mode propagating from the forward direction from the left to right how much energy or amplitude will be coupled energy will be transferred to the backward propagating mode. So, far we have considered beta 1 and beta 2 I have not mentioned that whether the waveguide is a uh, single mode or multi mode only the condition we have imposed that the mode uh, one of the uh, forward propagating mode will be coupled to the one of the backward propagating mode. And in that case the backward propagating mode I am launching in one of the forward propagating mode and one of the backward propagating mode will be coupled depending on the delta beta value choosing delta beta value. And then if I know that how much energy is being coupled to the how much amplitude is grown to the backward propagating mode and take a ratio with the forward propagating mode exactly at z equal to 0 that will be giving you a reflection coefficient. Similarly, if I try to make say a 1 a 1 z equal to L whatever the value you get at z equal to L. And if you divided by a 1 0 whatever you have launched that will be actually your transmission function. So, I can find out what is the reflection, what is the reflection coefficient, what is the transmission coefficient and if you take r r star then I get reflectivity and if I get t t star I get t that will be transmission coefficient transmission fraction of power will be transmitted that will be defined by t and if the structure interstructure is lossless then we know that r plus t should be equal to 1 ok. Fine. So, the solution so far we are getting very good if it is single mode waveguide that means beta 1 equal to minus beta 2 only one mode will be guided fundamental mode. Then we can say that the coupling happening for the forward propagating fundamental mode to backward propagating fundamental mode. So, both are same their propagation constant will be same only direction will be different 
because only fundamental mode okay beta 1 equal to minus beta 2 is defined as beta and again we know beta equal to beta can be defined from the dispersion relation again and again we had discussed omega by c n effective or omega by beta equal to phase velocity c by n effective so that is known now if i just substitute here beta 1 equal to minus beta 2 equal to beta that means beta minus minus beta minus 2 pi by lambda that is your delta beta so delta beta will be delta beta we are getting 2 beta minus 2 pi by lambda that is what i have written here so forward propagating wave you want to see if there is a coupling between forward propagating fundamental mode to backward propagating fundamental mode because of the first Fourier harmonics m equal to 1 by the way we have considered when I put 2 pi by lambda not m that means we are considering only first Fourier harmonics because we can consider that okay you can design your structure so that this delta beta will be close to 0 when beta 1 minus beta 2 minus 2 pi by lambda uh, consider as m equal to 1 okay. So, in that case we consider this one m equal to 1 we consider and delta beta again beta we know that this one this value we just put beta instead of beta omega by c n effective 2 pi by lambda. So, this is your delta beta. Now, you note suppose fundamental mode and single mode fundamental mode propagating the forward direction and only coupling possibility is there if you want if you do not want to lose any energy outside then energy can be coupled to the backward propagating fundamental mode. So, the backward propagating fundamental mode whatever the reflection coefficient you will be getting that is depends on delta beta. So, delta beta how this delta beta can vary? The delta beta can vary by changing frequency, by changing effective index, by changing periodicity. So, once you have your waveguide fixed, periodicity fixed, modulation fixed that means the periodic perturbation is fixed that means delta beta can vary with the frequency. So, that means you can have delta beta equal to 0 you can find a solution for one frequency and if you detune the frequency your delta beta will be non-zero. So, this delta beta you can vary as a function of frequency and as a function of frequency you can see reflection will be there. So, that means this r will be frequency dependent. So, you get a reflection coefficient which is frequency dependent. It is similar to ring resonator you know ring transmission characteristics the transfer function is a frequency dependent particular wavelength is resonant to the ring resonator that particular wavelength of the field will be stored inside the ring similarly uh, in that output that particular wavelength will be missing. But here also we see reflection is a frequency dependent. So, certain frequency is reflected back in completely that frequency will be absent in the transmission. So, we are now ending up with a device again which can be a uh, transfer function can be or reflection can be function of frequency. So, if you can design properly you can actually use this device for various applications ok. So, now, now we consider if delta beta equal to 0, if delta beta equal to 0 then we can consider if the delta beta equal to 0 means this value equal to this value. So, for that particular omega whenever you are solving that is actually omega b 2 beta will be 2 pi by c and beta will be omega by uh, c n effective then we consider omega b that is the angular frequency corresponding to delta beta equal to 0. That angular frequency delta beta equal to 0 we consider Bragg frequency Bragg angular frequency pi c by lambda n effective. And if you consider again we, you know omega equal to 2 pi 2 pi c by lambda if omega b we can write lambda b. So, if you just substitute 2 pi c by lambda b then what we can get? We can get one more equation lambda b. Lambda b is equal to 2 n effective lambda. So, that means if we know the periodicity of the periodic structure and if we know the effective index of the average effective index of the structure then we know this lambda b particular lambda b we can find where delta beta equal to 0 right that is what we have solved. So, delta beta will be 0 for a given waveguide structure and periodicity perturbation that particular wavelength will give you delta beta equal to 0. So, what happens to delta beta equal to 0 
for the reflection coefficient, reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient. And we know that when delta beta equal to 0, that is the longitudinal phase matching condition satisfied, in that case coupling will be maximum, that means we can consider this R value will be maximum, reflectivity will be maximum. That means when lambda b exactly match to this expression, then that particular wavelength will be seeing maximum coupling in the backward direction. Okay. And if you are just detuning from that lambda b, then delta beta is non-zero. So, what you will see that your reflection will be dropping, that is the common sense, qualitatively you can understand. So, delta beta that is the zero means longitudinal phase, con phase matching condition is satisfied. So, coupling will be maximum that we have learned from the coupled mode theory. And if delta beta is non-zero, coupling will be less. So, you will see less reflectivity for those wavelengths. So, that means your reflection is a certain band will be rejected. It will not propagate in the forward direction, it will be reflected in the backward direction around lambda b. That is a uh, that is the beauty of a DBS structure. So, around a particular wavelength, some band, if you want to reflect back, you use DBS structure. Okay. So, now what we will do? We will just try to discuss about how to design an integrated optical DBR filter with a desired specification. I want certain DBR structure which will reflect a certain band of wavelength at a certain lambda. At certain lambda, we can define that as a lambda b that can be 15 50 nanometer. And I want around 15 50 nanometer delta lambda, some bandwidth about 1 nanometer to be rejected, to be reflected, and rest of the wavelength will be traveling without any problem. Can we design such DBS structure? If I need suppose 5 nanometer, can we design such structure? And if I have how much it will be reflectivity? I need 50 percent reflectivity in that band. Can we, uh, is it possible to design that? If I want very high extinction reflectivity, maybe everything should be almost one reflectivity one, can we design that? So, that is what we are going to discuss now. So, we we just summarize, this is a single mode wave guide we consider, that means forward direction propagating E f, same E naught x y j omega t minus beta z and backward direction A 2 E naught because it is fundamental mode in the backward direction also field profile will be same and backward direction plus beta z we consider. And delta beta we have defined that beta 1 minus beta 2 minus 2 pi by lambda. So, beta 1 equal to minus beta 2 equal to beta we consider then delta beta will be in this form. So, we know what is the delta beta and from here delta beta equal to 0 then omega corresponding to omega b. And we know that boundary conditions, boundary values that we are launching from this side and no backward propagating wave is there at z equal to L backward propagating wave will be here and forward propagating wave will be here. So, since backward propagating wave coming here that means backward propagating wave will be present also in the input side because whatever reflected back that will continue to propagate in this direction. And deflection coefficient we have derived by solving differential coupled, equa coupled differential equation and if we want to know reflectivity just take complex conjugate we will be getting that this one complex this is a complex value complex conjugate then we will be getting and as we have defined S is actually depend on kappa and delta beta. Okay. Now, we want to design what? First of all, we need to know kappa. So, thing is that obviously, this reflectivity depends on kappa as well as delta beta. We said that any coupling possible when phase matching condition is close to 0, delta beta close to 0 and kappa is non-zero. So, delta beta tends to 0 and coupling coefficient must not be equal to 0. Higher the coupling coefficient, more strength, coupling strength will be more. So, first thing is that calculating coupling constant for this type of DVR structure. How to do that? If I just try to see the cross section, any cross section if you see in the DVR structure, we will see similar to this one. So, you see this is the entire waveguide width. That means, I am talking about this one. Okay, that is traced along x direction, entire width x direction, this is w. And then you see width is modulated, 
the modulated width shown here this side and this side. I have shown here one side that means x1 to x2 and y1 to y2. This is a re wave gate structure, silicon on insulator just example we have given earlier also. This is some refractive index substrate that is buried oxide box oxide and NC can be air, can be oxide also and this is ND that is the device layer refractive index. Normally we know that ND greater than NS greater than NC or equal to NC. This is the condition. And we know that any two mode involved in coupling, the coupling coefficient defined by for a periodic structure kappa H2 mode, mode 1 and mode 2 coupling between mode 1 and mode 2 because of the 1 Fourier coefficient m equal to 1 omega epsilon 0 by 4 Fourier coefficient b m instead b m you know, remember that b m equal to j by m pi we consider for rectangular periodic perturbation we consider 1 and mode 1 field distribution mode 2 field distribution and then refractive index uh, modulation. So, we see that in the cross section this region refractive index is modulated, this region refractive index is modulated. That means, this region instead of silicon now ND you are getting NC. So, in this two region I have delta N equal to ND square instead of ND square you are having NC square. So, that is actually delta N square. So, delta N square means refractive index square, how much refractive index square is changed in this region and in this region. So, delta n square I know, but that that is true only x1 to x2 and y1 to y2 region this type of refractive index modulation you have done in your periodic perturbation. So, that means this one I can write simply n d square minus n c square and that is happening which region x1 to x2 y1 to y2. So, I can write x1 to x2 I should integrate y1 to y2 I integrate. So, whatever the u1 x y e2 x y in this region is there, how much overlap is there with the grating modulation that will be your kappa value. Simple, only thing is that you need to know propagation a uh, field distribution of guided mode. If it is single mode, you can solve numerically what is the full vectorial method we have discussed and full vectorial method we have discussed. So, use that and you get your field distribution. All right. So, now what you get? I just simply C12 I am writing here and I know that C12 equal to C21 minus 1 star that is the Fourier coefficient we discussed that complex conjugate of the uh, Fourier harmonics that means uh, backward plus m equal to plus and minus they will be equal and we define that kappa. This is the kappa value. We write omega epsilon 0 by 4 and B1, Bm we have written as a j by m pi. So, B1 equal to j by pi, j by pi I have written and I will come to this point here little later and then delta n I said that n d square by n c square that will be there, integration will be x1 to x2, y1 to y2 I have written that one, okay. but this one what is this? This you know that whenever we just use a modes, mode field distributions we consider this mode field distribution E1 star x y e 2 x y d x d y equal to delta 1 to 2 omega mu by beta. So, that type of norm while developing coupled mode theory we have used that one mode is actually can be associated with 1 watt normalized to 1 watt and that integration is if it is there same mode then 2 omega mu by beta we have used that orthogonality condition utilized and since now I am calculating numerically I have to consider there th this individual mode will be ortho uh, normalized and normalization will be first mode will be normalized to if you write it will be in field it will be omega mu naught by beta 1 and another will be 2 omega mu naught because this is the square comes. So, when you are getting individual field that will be 2 omega mu by mu naught by beta 2 and if you multiply that one that is coming like that if two modes are different. But our interest is that mode 1 and mode 2 will be same that means beta 1 equal to beta 2 should be equal to omega by c n effective that is the case. So, I can write here beta 1 beta 2 omega by c. So, if I just substitute n effective here then it would be simpler equation 
So for single mode waveguide u1 xy equal to e2 xy equal to e0. So just put here all the values I am putting simplifying here and of course this 2 why this 2 is coming because I am integrating x1 to x2 y1 to y2 only this region. If your perturbation is the other side that means you have to 2 times you have to multiply. If perturbation only one side then this 2 is not required. Okay. So there are also DBS structure uh, people demonstrate having uh, grating structure in one side only. Okay. So this is kappa value we can simply calculate if we know the field distribution and if we know what is the perturbation region and we just multiply n d square minus n c square and n effective of the guided mode. So that is that straightforward whatever we have developed using coupled mode theory from there we can find out what is the kappa value. So kappa value is independent of periodicity okay? but it is dependent on uh, duty cycle. Depending on the duty cycle, you have this expression B m equal to j by m pi, right. So, it is actually considered for uh, 50 percent duty cycle B m we consider. This is actually this expression is for 50 percent duty cycle. If duty cycle is differing, then whatever the value comes, the B m expression that has to be considered. So, in this case, we have considered the duty cycle is 50 percent. So, p equal to half we consider and duty is p lambda you remember we have discussed that one. So, kappa value we know how to calculate you have a single mode waveguide and you know how much perturbation normally you know coupled mode theory uh, developed based on the weak perturbation if perturbation is very strong this type of kappa calculation may not uh, match actually it can differ if you calculate like this way. In that case if it is a strong perturbation then you have to go for direct sol solution of Maxwell's equation you may not get any analytical formula. So you have to solve Maxwell's equation for the entire structure so called FDTD method finite difference time domain method and then you can get how much you can find out what is the field reflecting backward direction then you can find you do not need coupled mode theory in that case. Coupled mode theory works for normally for uh, uh, small perturbation. But most of the perturbation we use for DBR getting structure somehow this kappa calculation matches very well. Okay. So, this is what it is shown for example, a waveguide dimension of 500 nanometer and device thickness is this one this device layer thickness is 220 nanometer fondry used and age that means this slab height is 150 nanometer. So, if it is 220 nanometer that means this one is just 70 nanometer etched. Okay. So, if this is the case then we can consider x1 minus x2 is equal to delta w this side delta w this side delta w and both side this delta w if you are varying as x function here and if you calculate kappa by solve numerically then it shows like that. Okay. So, as you increase the modulation that means width variation periodic width uh, variation both side if you are considering 10 nanometer means 10 nanometer this side x2 minus x1 and 10 nanometer this side you are modulating both side. So, in that case kappa value it is coming here you see per micrometer 0 0.005 per micrometer kappa expression if you see dimensionally that comes with per micrometer. So, as the modulation increases modulation the periodic modulation periodic perturbation that increases your kappa value increases. So, stronger and stronger kappa will be more stronger because this integration value will be increasing more and more right. So, again I said that this kappa this couple more theory everything it uh, matches very well when kappa is smaller here we have considered up to 50 nanometer that means 500 to 50 nanometer perturbation 500 is the width 50 nanometer is the perturbation that means 10 percent modulation. So, up to 10 percent we say that somewhat it can match uh, whatever actual scenario is that the coupled mode theory is a highly approximation you have considered first condition is that the field is amplitude that a 1 z and a 2 z that is actually slowly varying amplitude second order derivative we have ignored. So, that is how stronger perturbation it will not be uh, very much useful to develop coupled mode theory, but you can get an idea trend 
if you use this one even if it is kappa is more you calculate using couple more theory you get a trend at least you can need you can say that okay i am going to get uh, this much reflectivity or this much uh, reflection coefficient okay so kappa is the first thing we need to decide how much kappa we want higher the kappa i can get stronger the reflectivity reflection coupling from the forward propagating mode to backward propagating mode so kappa i can decide according to our desired specification okay now next thing is that calculating field amplitudes a1 and a2 z i would be now interested to know how a1 z actually varying as a function of z for a given kappa i know that a1 z expression i have derived earlier with this boundary values a2 z i have the i have the analytical formula so i know now uh, kappa value i can with a certain modulation i can estimate what is the kappa value i can now put delta beta equal to say zero for example or some value some detuned from omega b or lambda b some value will be there i can substitute here and then as a function of z i can find a1 zero i can consider say equal to one as a function of z i can find how a1 z is it is you see cos hyperbolic sin hyperbolic cos hyperbolic so hyperbolic function it is coming okay so now if i plot you, you can use a matlab program to plot this one to see how it is varying whether this a1 z is significantly reducing uh, as a function of z or it is slowly varying something like that you can find out similar thing can be happening a to z you see this is the plot for delta beta equal to 0 i have considered okay exactly phase matching condition and then i find delta w i consider about 25 nanometer corresponding kappa is approximately 0 0.01 per micrometer okay and we have considered periodicity about 292 nanometer so periodicity 290 nanometer we consider to match lambda b exactly equal to 15-15 nanometer that is the communication band exactly uh, middle of the c band optical c band then I see that a1 z at z this is z equal to 0 this is z equal to l 100 micrometer 100 mi micrometer long grating I consider with a periodicity 290 nanometer duty cycle 50 percent modulation 25 nanometer this side 25 nanometer this side 25 nanometer a1 z that means this one I am just talking mode of that one you see starting from 1 I have considered that a1 0 this one actually equal to 1 say it slowly almost exponentially it is decreasing and up to here it is reaching something like that and then what you see a to z a to z as i said that a to z a to z, a to z equal to l equal to 0 that is 0 then that will be actually increasing increasing this direction backward direction propagating so backward direction propagating field strength will be more and more towards z equal to 0 because it is building something like that so when it is coming this one at z equal to 0 backward direction the field will be at this amplitude and this will be amplitude so in this direction here i will be getting the backward propagating wave mode will be around say 0 0.55 amplitude and forward direction it will be 1 so forward in in this region i will be getting forward direction amplitude is 1 and backward direction mode also will be present that will have 0 0.55 so if you take ratio that means you can find out the reflectivity is 0.55 55% will be reflected okay so that is what we get so that means if we just consider kappa equal to this one l equal to 100 micrometer then you get 50 per, about 55% will be reflected or something 50 uh, 50 means amplitude 0.55 so r square will be even less 25% or so it will be reflected back okay so now we know that okay if i use for a given kappa value if i use 100 micrometer whether everything will be reflected or not we find that not everything will not be reflected so if you what do we do we do two things we can increase the kappa value or we can increase the length both we have increased just to show here if you see now delta w that means modulation we have increased increased to 50 nanometer both side this side 50 nanometer that side 50 nanometer this is 50 nanometer this is 50 nanometer kappa is increased to 0 0.023 kappa calculation we have shown earlier how to do that and lambda same periodicity 
and length we have considered 200 micrometer. Then we see interesting because kappa increased you see within 100 micrometer length z equal to 0 to z equal to 200. You see this is actually your A1z, A1z rapidly falling reducing and if you see if you zoom here you have backward wave also you see as it falls backward propagating wave will be also increasing that means almost 100 percent it will be deflecting back. A1z will be decreasing and as it decrease backward propagating mode will be picking up. So, you get almost 100 percent reflectivity and that even you do not need to go up to 200 micrometer. For this kappa if you just terminate here about 120 micrometer getting length then your entire field whatever you are launching from this side that will be reflected back. So, you can either increase L or in increase kappa. So, depending on that you can find out how much you want a reflectivity around delta beta equal to 0 corresponding lambda b you can just find out lambda b equal to 2 n effective period that is what we have derived earlier. So, one thing is that reflectivity we can estimate kappa value depending on the kappa value I can just predict what is the reflectivity I would get for a given length. If I see that we, I cannot increase kappa more because of losses or some technological problem then I can go for longer length to get more reflectivity ok. So, that is what we get. Now, next thing is that calculating reflections and transmission spectra. I said that delta beta equal to 0 your coupling will be more maximum and kappa must be not equal to 0 more kappa is better. But again I said that delta beta close to 0 just a little bit detune that also will give you some effect in coupling. So, around that delta beta equal to 0 and corresponding lambda b equal to 15-15 nanometer I would see some kind of band ok. So, band will be rejected may be reflex reflectivity may not be as high as for delta beta equal to 0, but you may get a band. So, to get a transmission and reflection spectrum how to proceed? You know we have r equal to here we have written and capital R this is the amplitude reflection coefficient this is the power reflectivity reflectivity just complex conjugate if you take this one is the value you will be getting. And we know that delta beta equal to this one this delta beta we have just reproduced here. So, just omega you vary then you can get when matching exactly delta beta 0 that means I can, can find a this one if you are putting 0 then I can find a omega b corresponding to this value for a particular period omega b I will be getting lambda b I will be getting. Now, I just detune your frequency or wavelength from that omega b that means delta beta I am detuning from 0. So, in that case for delta beta equal to 0 if I put I know reflectivity equal to this one if you just put delta beta equal to 0 that means s will be delta beta 0 s will be equal to just kappa ok s equal to kappa delta beta 0 then what I will be getting I will be here I will be getting sin hyperbole and delta beta this term will go once this term will be go going then fine then s square will become kappa square. So, sin hy hyperbolic square divided by cos hyperbolic square you will be getting tan hyperbolic square for delta beta equal to 0 reflectivity will be tan hyperbolic square kappa l and we know delta beta equal to 0 corresponding omega b I have derived earlier again repeating here and lambda b corresponding to this one and if it is lossless case because this dbs structure if no loss is there will be some loss te technically because there will be some kind of roughness etc will be introduced some loss will be there. But for understanding purpose for analytical discussion purpose we consider that it is a lossless case. So, in that case reflectivity and transmittivity r and t if you just add they must be equal to 1. So, once you know r then you can find t equal to 1 minus r that means energy conservation whatever power will be transmitted that actually related to whatever power is reflected r plus t will be reflection plus transmission total will be 1 if you are launching power equal to 1 watt for example, if you are normalized that thing fine. Now, now you see you plot for a delta w equal to 25 nanometer that is corresponding kappa equal to 0 0.01 micrometer we have uh, uh, calculated earlier for these waveguide parameters obviously and lambda equal to 250 2 nanometer periodicity and 100 micrometer grating length. You see this is your transmission characteristics, this is your reflection char characteristics that means this is your 
R and this is your T. Okay, T equal to one minus R basically. You see, at exactly around fifteen fifty nanometer, that is what our period is matched because lambda b equal to to an effective lambda. You know the effective index of the waveguide and perturbation periodicity is lambda. So an effective periodicity two ninety two and an effective of this waveguide if you calculate and multiplied by two that will be lambda b. We matched exactly two ninety two nanometer and after MATLAB simulation it can it is showing that around fifty. 50 15 15 nanometer you see you have a so sorry not this one is not r this is actually t and this is actually r this is reflection you see this is the reflectivity this part it is reflected back and what is reflected back that will be missing in the transmission so this is the transmission characteristics blue one here it is transmission characteristics red one is the reflection characteristics so you see Reflectivity here, if you see how much you are getting, nearly sixty percent, and sixty percent at fifteen fifty nanometer. Then transmission there, you are getting forty percent. That means exactly at fifteen fifty nanometer wavelength, lambda b equal to fifteen fifty nanometer wavelength, you can expect sixty percent reflectivity. Sixty percent of the power will be reflected back. Forty percent will be transmitted. Right? But again, you see. Since delta beta around zero is fifteen fifty nanometer, corresponding to fifteen fifty nanometer, it is adjusted delta b. But if you detune by detuning the wavelength, if you detune the wavelength, omega will be detuned. Omega will be detuned means delta beta will no more be zero. So if you can increase the wavelength from lambda b positive direction or negative direction, delta beta will be increasing compared to zero. When it is increasing, coupling will be less. Coupling means For coupling between forward propagating mode and backward propagating mode, and then you see your reflection will be dropped rapidly, and transmission also will be seen bad. So a specific band, particular band, you are getting in the reflection, and that will be missing in the transmission. So it's a very nice device. You can design. Suppose I want this much reflectivity, this much bandwidth, I can design that. So suppose, what decides this bandwidth? We'll discuss that. How much band? What is the 3 dB bandwidth, for example, FWHM? That actually very important for application point of view. So let us move on to that. Before going into that, if I just see, if you are just going for little bit stronger coupling, both side 15 nanometer modulation. This side width is uh, 15 nanometer. This side 15 nanometer. So corresponding kappa, if you calculate, that is actually 0.023 micrometer. Per micrometer period, I have kept same, and I have considered 200 micrometer long. Need not be 200 micrometer because we have shown that for this kappa, even 150 micrometer is enough. But we consider 100 micrometer just to get reflectivity and transmittivity, transmission, reflection and transmission. So you see now this reflection is the red curve. This is R, and this is your transmission. So along with the main peak. This is actually lambda b corresponding to lambda b around fifteen fifteen nanometer. You get a particular band, almost flat top reflection. You are getting with a particular band, but you get also some side lobes, both side reflection side lobes. Okay, so normally that side lobes also sometimes very important. Sometimes it is very problematic also some applications. So there are some engineering methods, some design things are there. You can actually. Uh, you can actually design your DBR structures with some kind of apodization, etc., so that you can actually uh, remove the side lobes. Okay, but here our interest is that how to decide a uh, design a desired bandwidth with very high reflectivity. Okay, so for that purpose, we take help of only the reflection spectrum. Just consider transmission. I have just removed and reflection consider. And we can consider this is your Bragg wavelength, according to this one. Bragg wavelength is defined to an effective lambda. So lambda, if you put an effective of the waveguide, if you calculate, then lambda b exactly will be getting around 15, 15 nanometer and so on. Now you see, as you go away from lambda b, this side or this side, that means your delta beta not equal to zero. Then your reflectivity drops. 
and it 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 is zero value you see this will be minimum at first minimum and second minimum third minimum fourth minimum and so so it will be side loops will be coming like that so we consider that where is actually happening first minima right side and first minima left side that particular width if we define delta lambda sb that is actually called stop band so called sb stands for stop band delta lambda sb stop band that can be considered as a bandwidth another definition is 3 db bandwidth of course but since we get a clear zero in both side zero uh, reflection so i can consider this band between this zero first zero both side that can be considered as a uh, bandwidth so how to do that i know this one all this expression i have written a little bit move on what we do r equal to 0 for l not equal to 0 kappa not equal to 0 is that possible certain length is there getting length l not equal to 0 kappa also not equal to 0 because your getting is there period is also 292 nanometer is there so for that if you just inspect this one this characteristics carefully when it will be 0 you have a numerator denominator obviously any time numerator 0 means r will be equal to 0 so we can say that sin hyperbolic sl must be equal to 0 but sin hyperbolic sl if you just put equal to 0 this will be putting equal to 0 at the same time s square cos hyperbolic sl should not be equal to 0 if this is equal to 0 then it will be indeterminant 0 by 0 indeterminant I want exactly 0 r equal to 0 when that is possible. Let us stick first if I put sin hyperbolic s l equal to 0 hyperbolic function if you just try it ne, sin hyperbolic sin hyperbolic function x is normally e to the power x minus e to the power x by 2 and cos hyperbolic x equal to e to the power x plus e to the power minus x by 2 that is actually like a uh, normal uh, method. Uh, normally when you consider sin x normally e to the power i x minus e to the power minus i x by 2 you define similarly because hyperbolic so x is the real here so in that case we can write this one so sin hyperbolic sl we can write like this so if that is actually equal to 0 you can just little bit do little bit algebra e to the power 2 sl must be equal to 1 so for r equal to 0 this is one condition numerator i am considering so e to the power j 2 p pi it should be equal to 2 sl 1 means instead of 1 i can write like that so that means this sl if it equal to j p pi then this one will be numerator will be 0 but i know that sl equal to j p pi and what is p p is integer p can vary from 1 0 1 2 3 that is your p value but once you get p equal to 0 s will be equal to 0 because l not equal to 0 so that means this one also will be 0 this part also will become 0 so that means when i put sl equal to 0 for p equal to 0 that means this is 0 this is 0 this is also will become 0 that means indeterminate that's why p equal to 0 we will not consider rather what we consider p instead of starting from 0 we can say 1 2 3 so on so p is defined like this okay so p equal to 1 2 3 and so on the numerator will become 0 and denominator will become non zero so in that case i can get r values will be 0 so p equal to 0 means p equal to 1 means we will be getting first minima p equal to 2 means another r equal to 0 p equal to 3 that means p i am varying means i am changing very basically delta beta if I am just changing S value, SL changing means S actually directly depends on this one. So, S is varying means delta beta is being changed. So, delta beta is changed means I am considering minima I can get periodically. When P equal to 1, 1 minima, R equal to 0, P equal to 2, another minima, P equal to 3, another minima and so on I will be getting. So, little bit refresh it. So, SL is this one means S square, S square, L square that means j equal to minus 1 j square p square pi square l i take this side s square this one why i have written s square because i know the s square expression s square expression is kappa square minus delta beta by 2 so that means this s square i have written here 
and p square pi by l square I have written here, right. So, now I can write delta beta now is discretized value. For certain delta beta p value according to 1 I can write 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. For that particular value r can be equal to 0. We remember that delta beta equal to 0 r cannot r is the maximum. Now, I consider r I am getting 0 for delta beta p this expression plus minus this one. So, delta beta kappa square I take this side. So, I write. So, p equal to 1 means I will be getting delta beta p 1. Okay? And there will be two values. So, delta beta plus minus di direction I also I will be getting minimas and left hand side that is the minimum all the minimas whatever I am getting in the transmission spectra that I can actually express analytically for which delta beta. But here delta beta is represented in terms of lambda. We know how to convert delta beta into lambda or frequency right this one delta beta I just change omega then delta beta will be changing right from 0 I have some value 0 omega b will be there now I am just changing from that omega from omega b then I get delta beta non-zero. So, that corresponding omega can be lambda. So, I can get corresponding delta beta value and corresponding delta beta value will give you these values. So, this is straightforward mathematical uh, equations you can just try to do that. So, to calculate central stop band delta lambda b I have to consider p equal to 1 for p equal to 1 I will be getting delta beta p 1 value plus another value minus plus minus because square root is there. I just try to find out delta beta plus minus value. So, for p called delta beta p plus equal to 2 cup plus 2 kappa naught and delta beta minus I will be writing minus 2 kappa naught. What is kappa naught? Kappa naught I am just considering this one because kappa square plus you have to add pi by l pi square by l square that um, total thing I am just representing as a kappa naught square. So, that means delta beta plus when delta beta plus when delta beta is plus 2 kappa naught there I will be getting 1 r equal to 0 and minus 2 kappa naught there also I will be getting 1 0. So, that means this corresponding to delta beta equal to 2 kappa naught plus and this minima corresponding to delta beta minus 2 kappa naught where kappa naught equal to this one kappa naught square is defined by this one. Okay. So, I will need to understand what is this what is corresponding lambda here and what is corresponding lambda here and if you subtract then you will be getting the bandwidth of the filter. So, you, you can find out what is the particular bandwidth you want to reject from this structure right. So, now we go this delta beta plus plus corresponding to 2 kappa and I corresponding frequency I write omega 1. So, delta beta plus 2 omega 1 by C n effective minus 2 pi by lambda and 2 kappa naught I have. kappa naught value I know here right. And delta beta minus, I will be writing another frequency omega 2, 2 omega 2 by C and effective omega 2 like this. So, this thing basically what I am saying that this is corresponding to omega 1 and this is corresponding to omega 2, corresponding lambda you can calculate that is straightforward. So, I know that a certain omega 1, I suppose to get 2 kappa naught delta beta and another frequency I get minus 2 kappa naught. So, between omega 1 and omega 2 whatever the value band that particular band C is reflection from the structure. So, if we subtract this two, this two what I get this one basically we write beta omega 1 omega by C n effective for omega 1 frequency. So, I write 2 beta omega 1 minus 2 beta omega 2 and this value this value will be cancelled and 2 kappa naught minus 2 kappa naught it will become 4 kappa naught and 2 2 cancelled it will be 2 and beta omega 1 and beta omega 2 whatever the value. So, I am getting beta omega 1 minus beta omega 2 that is what we have written as a delta beta S B what I am writing because within that whatever beta comes that is actually C is reflection. So, that is why we called it delta beta stop band. So, if we just subtract this beta omega 1 and beta omega 2 within that. So, beta omega 2 to beta om omega 1. So, omega 1 to omega 2 whatever beta comes that beta values actually will not see any will see some kind of reflection in the main peak. So, that delta beta is B I have written as 2 kappa naught. So, beta 1 beta 2. Again 
I want to find out uh, corresponding frequency. So, de delta beta to frequency I have to convert or lambda I have to convert. I know that uh, omega equal to beta equal to I know that beta equal to omega by c n effective. So, if I do d beta by d omega then I know that this is n g by c that we have al al earlier already discussed. So, d beta by d omega equal to basically 1 by v g or d omega by d beta equal to group velocity, group velocity and phase velocity. So, from the dispersion relation I can write this one d omega by d beta equal to c by n g, c is the velocity of light and n g is the group index. So, I get the group velocity c by n g d omega by d beta. Now, I can find delta beta and delta omega relationship if we know the group velocity. So, I write delta omega if it is stop band corresponding delta delta omega stop band corresponding delta beta s b. So, delta beta s b if I scale to frequency that means, I have to multiply n g by c whatever delta beta whatever value 2 kappa naught is there if I multiply n g by c then you will be getting frequency domain stop band that is straightforward. So, if we do so frequency domain that means, 2 c by n g kappa naught kappa naught value is this one square root of this one. So, delta omega s b equal to this one and again you know omega equal to 2 pi c by lambda. So, delta omega equal to I can get delta omega equal to 2 pi c by lambda square delta lambda minus sign will be there minus sign if we do not consider then this delta omega I can consider delta lambda s b. So, this is an important formula I can find out suppose I want a particular band to be reflected I have to define kappa value I need a particular kappa value and if I know L and periodicity defines the Bragg wavelength I know the group index then I can find out how much band what is the bandwidth it will be reflected back. So, I can define a I can design a DBR distributed Bragg reflector which can actually reflect a particular band and that particular band is defined by length. So, longer the length longer the length it will be narrower L can be infinite very large then this this can be 0 then in that case only kappa dependent for very long grating structure. I think length does not matter what is the bandwidth it is reflecting what uh, reflection bandwidth, but for a shorter length of the grating it is actually related with the L we can define that one. So, that is how if I go back to this this structure. So, this band this top band particularly this uh, whatever we have represented this delta lambda S b that actually depends on your lambda lambda b square this lambda b square by n g proportional to n g and then square root of kappa square plus pi square by l square ok. This this is the expression already we have defined here we have discussed lambda b square pi n g ok. With this I stop here for uh, you, you know now you have learned now how to design a DBR structure if it is if you if it uh, actually if you know that it is it has to be designed in silicon silicon on insulator platform silicon photonics platform for photonic integrated circuits you know the waveguide dimension what is the technology limitations how much modulation you can do and depending on that you can actually design your dbr filter for a certain bandwidth of uh, spectrum to be reflected or to be stopped okay thank you very much